Uh, welcome viewers uh, to this public affairs uh, channel uh, by Supreme Media. Uh, this will be a weekly uh, uh, forum, a weekly show that we will be delving deeper into some of the trending news in Kenya, Africa and beyond. We will try to do a deep analysis on some of these issues that we feel are very important to you, our dear subscribers, and uh, those who are watching us. Uh, so today, uh, we will begin this uh, public affairs forum, where we'll be having uh, different uh, topics that will be impactful, uh, more importantly, educative, and more certainly, uh, entertaining to you. So today, uh, we will begin uh, one of the topics uh, that has been on the news this week uh, is the dialogue uh, between uh, the ASMIO uh, coalition and uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, following the demonstrations that have been happening uh, which is this year uh, and uh, now they have decided to have a bipartisan uh, talks uh, to try and uh, resolve some of the issues that uh, have made uh, uh, the opposition coalition, that is Azimio, to have uh, protests, more, more so that have left many uh, lives lost and uh, property and all that. So this uh, past week, uh, the president and uh, the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, met secretly and uh, they decided that they would give dialogue a chance. So each party has nominated five names and uh, they already the process has already begun. Uh, and uh, each side has their leader who will be in charge of uh, leading uh, the negotiation. Uh, the Azimio coalition have uh, selected the uh, former vice president uh, Kalonzo Musioka and uh, the Kenya Kwanza will be led by Majority Leader Kimani uh, Chungwa. So this committee uh, will begin and uh, they have been sending each other letters uh, this week uh, and uh, we hope uh, that maybe this coming week they will be have uh, been able to make some good ground in the talks. So suddenly the major activities that uh, will be discussed there will be reconstitution of the IBC, um, things to do with the opposition leader and um, so many other issues on uh, political interest inclusion and Azimir have also talked about that there should be an issue on the cost of living that so their supporters uh, get out of the streets and decry of high cost of living, which is affecting all Kenyans, regardless of uh, their political affiliation. The trending issue this week was uh, the president uh, blasted uh, his cabinet uh, and he told them that most of them have not settled in in their offices and some of them are not in charge, uh, not even well informed about uh, some of the activities and programs that their ministries are doing. So the president uh, looked a little bit uh, annoyed and uh, agitated and asked them to pull up their socks uh, lest that uh, they will be tripped off their uh, positions, uh, their cabinet positions. So uh, this issue is a, is, a, is a very big issue uh, from the way I, I look at it, um, I look at it as uh, in terms of the recruitment and uh, the selection of his cabinet. Uh, it points a lot of things uh, into how uh, some of them got these positions uh, or what was the criteria uh, because the constitution uh, had left a provision that uh, the cabinet uh, secretaries uh, should be professionals in a particular area. So maybe that should be our uh, something that we need to look at. 
is why uh, is there that these people are not settling into their ministries? Uh, what could be the problem? So we need to go back down to the root causes. So I think the recruitment and the selection need to be looked into so that we give people the right tasks so that it's a task that they are able to to handle so that they come in with some professionalism in that sector. So this is something that is coming to, to highlight uh, because uh, more of these positions uh, are given as a result of people wanting to reward their friends who help them in their campaigns, who finance their campaigns. So this is what we are getting. This is a result of uh, some of the effects of how our politics is. Another issue um, this week um, has been the education reforms uh, that uh, have been um, far, far reaching. Uh, actually, when the president uh, took over, he, he was against the CBC and uh, he had promised to abolish it. But uh, apparently when he got to office, he decided to change tune and uh, formed a task force to look at some of the challenges that uh, parents had raised uh, according to the CBC and uh, the report was uh, uh, out this week. Uh, if you can allow me just to go through them quickly. Uh, one was uh, reducing the number of learning areas in primary and secondary schools, increasing schools capitation, adopting a comprehensive school system, uh, coordinating bursaries and uh, scholarships, and uh, categorizing uh, public secondary schools as career pathways, and also one year internship for teachers to become registered CB CBC teachers. Yeah, so this report uh, recommendation is a, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a very good thing. So we look forward uh, to the implementation of uh, this CBC because it's a new curriculum uh, that uh, the country is adopting and uh, it is good that uh, these issues are uh, implemented so that the potential of children, learners is now fully exploited and the children are able to learn in a very good environment that allows them to allows them to thrive or allows them to be their best because that's what the CBC is all about. Another issue that has dominated the news this week uh, is the world coin. Uh, I think uh, you are all familiar or you've had about the world coin that has been uh, there. So it, had, it has reached the parliament and the uh, parliament uh, was discussing this issue and they were asking very hard questions to the Minister of uh, Information, Communication and Technology and uh, the Minister of uh, in Interior and national security about how these people are collecting uh, sensitive information about Kenyans without proper arrangements in the law. Uh, yes, so this issue was um, raising a lot of debate and uh, people are just wondering how do people just come from wherever they have come from and just start collecting data of people without having sufficient uh, legal uh, and operational frameworks uh, put in place. So this is a very serious issue that points out to how the country manages its data. Uh, it looks like there, there are a lot of gaps uh, in that area on data security, cyber crime and all that. And I think we need to pull up our socks, especially the policy makers and uh, the people who are in charge of the Ministry of Information, that is uh, CCK and uh, the Ministry of Information and uh, Communication, right also with the security, the security Ministry Interior. 
uh, because just last week uh, there was a cyber attack on some of the government services like the e-citizen. Uh, we saw it was uh, people, there was attempted hack and it affected even other systems, uh, other systems like M-Pesa, it was a bit of a challenge for some few hours. So that shows how vulnerable we can be with uh, cyber crime. So my, my, my view is that uh, these issues should not be happening. They should, they should, not, be, they should not be happening uh, in this country. We should be very strict uh, with how data is collected and, uh, and what is it going to be used for, because this is information for the, the country's citizens. So I think uh, and also constant monitoring in the cyberspace, uh, they need to be checking so that we, we don't fall uh, to cyber crime uh, attacks so that we, the government must protect uh, its citizens so that is my take uh, it was a short uh, forum a short public engagement uh, kindly uh, feel free to share your feedback uh, to us uh, on our email and also remember to subscribe and uh, we look forward to the next uh, public engagement uh, very soon and uh, thank you for watching thank you for your time and uh, remain safe uh, be happy and uh, we look forward to meeting you in the next engagement thank you